Yeah, I'm, I'm going to ask you about the CD. I'm going to ask you how things are going. Yeah. Uh, after he heard a little bit of DeAndre, he said, man, you were super transparent there. And I figured, I said, yeah, that's Israel. He's, he's going to be transparent. Yeah, you're going to yeah. be you regardless. Uh, just say, I love you, man. I love you, too. It's yeah. good to be here with yeah. you. When everything went crazy, um, and I reached out, just want to tell you, man, I thank God for you, and we're, and we're family. Yes, sir. For real, for real. Yes, sir. All right, well, um, we're going to get this party started right. Let's start with a word of prayer. All right. Uh, Allie, you want to pray for us? Sure. You want me to um, stop recording you? No, go I'll ahead. I'll keep it recording. Okay. Lord, we thank you, God. Thank you for friendships, God. Thank you for kingdom friendships and kingdom connections, God. You know, We know that you put all things in place, God, in our lives, and you orchestrate all of this, God. So I lift up both of my brothers in Christ to you, God. I pray, Lord, that this time would be edifying, God, yes, that God. you would be glorified, Lord, that you would guide their tongues as they speak, Lord, and that the words that, that are uttered would bless you, God, and would build up your people. In yes, Jesus' Lord. name, amen. 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 All right, you're hearing okay through those headphones. Oh, yeah, they're nice and loud. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to turn it down? I mean, you I'm, turn on, down on that side. I'm on zero here, and, 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 and it's still, still going it's crazy. Still powerful. How about that? That's great. Is that good there? Yes, sir, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm going to just do that. <laughs> so I can, yeah, Lord, have mercy. Yeah, okay. Let me um, get this party started, right? All right. We're going to go back, then we'll, we'll come up. Okay. We'll get back to the future. All right. All right. I'm going to start new. Y'all don't know me. Here we go. Hallelujah. Check, check, check. All right. Let's get started. All right. Hey, I got Israel Hogan in studio, man. How are you? I'm good. Man, so good I'm always good when somebody says my name properly. Is that so? Yeah, you've always said it right. Yeah, I man. I, I just that. don't get that. Huffington, where did they get that from? Man, listen, we've been called everything from Huffington to Houston to <laughs> Houghton to Houghton. What in the Houghton, world? Right. People add an L. Really? I don't know. Yeah. And then you, I've been on this press run, so you can't imagine how many different ways I've heard my name. Mentioned. Oh, it's craziness. It's craziness. All right. So you've been singing for Jesus how long? I am in 28 years of full-time ministry right now. Okay. Actually, 29. I started when I was 19 full-time. Really? Yeah. Now, I, I know that you started playing guitar and uh, keyboard, and when you first started music ministry... It wasn't the Israel Houghton we know now. No. No. I, mean, I no. I don't think so. No. I mean, but what? What do you mean? I mean the the musicality. I mean I love the stories where you talk about being in the kitchen. Oh yeah. And just uh, letting the Lord hone your skills and hone your relationship sure, with Him. Sure. Sure. So talk a little bit about the beginning because some people think you just add water and stir no. and you're gonna be making all kind of CDs. No, you spend time in obscurity for much longer than you spend known. Yeah. You know, and that's. That's the way it's probably supposed to be. Yeah. But no, I, I at 19, I was playing drums in the worship team at our church in Arizona, and the pastor was, you know, said, hey, I know you can sing, so why don't you consider being our worship leader? And, okay. I, said, and I said, well, you know, I'll pray about it, which was code for, nah, fam. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Right, I, right. I just want to be the drummer. I don't want any more responsibility than that. Right. And he's like, well, pray hard because you start tonight. Whoa. And he literally threw me in the deep end, and it was it was as terrible as you can imagine. I was mm. nervous, and just it was awful. And for about six weeks, it was awful like yeah. that. Yeah. And then a lady on our team said, you know, part of the problem is that you're here trying to figure out who you are mm. during our time, during worship time. Like, go home and figure that out. And it was a it was like a, a rebuke, but it was like it's done with so much love. And nobody gave me a blueprint for it. I just grabbed a piano I, I took my piano and I put it in my kitchen that you talked about and I like set up a water glass and a vase and like salt and pepper shakers and I led them in worship mm. and in that I you know I invited God I invited Jesus to come into my kitchen and, and meet with me because I said if this is something you've called me to do then teach me how to worship you. yeah yeah because I don't know what I'm doing yeah yeah and uh, you know it's it's amazing like even in that moment it wasn't about let me write songs and let me you know become something it was literally let me just sit at your feet let me just learn and out of those times came a confidence came an you know an awareness of his presence and um, and things got you know uh, I, I would say became second nature hmm. which sounds really great and until you realize whoa I've gone 
15 years without going back to the kitchen. Mm. And you wake up one day and you go, you know, what was what was once a get to, like I get to lead worship. I remember, you know, calling my mom that day going, mom, I get to lead worship today. Mm. And then 15 years later, I remember saying to somebody, yeah, man, I want to go to the game with you all tonight, but I got to lead worship. Got to do it. Yeah, so it, the, uh, it, you know, it went from empowerment to, like, obligation. And, you know, that is a sobering moment. when And, and I kind of discovered all this when my life was just turned upside down. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I went through a, you know, a good four or five-year period of just craziness in my life and, and doing it um, in, in silence, doing mm -hmm. it in, you know with nobody to talk to when no you know I didn't trust anybody to ask for help I just you know I'm gonna thug it out myself yeah and then you you know you find yourself shipwrecked and 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 but the beauty of it is you never fall from grace you always fall into grace what a blessing man. yeah man and I've experienced it firsthand let, let me ask you this with um with the culture that we live in where it's just like a culture of silence what I mean by that is you can really be struggling. You're talking about God's love and how he'll never let you go, and he's there for you. But uh, many of us that are up front, we sort of fear if we're transparent, this could be the death of me and the death of my ministry. Bro, I got a call last night at 10 p.m. Yeah. from a close friend of mine who said, hey, man, you've really helped me, you know, in, in watching your walk and watching your transparency. And, you know, I met with my pastor today and told him some things I was dealing with. I was like, oh man, that's that's great. He yes. goes, no, it's not great. Mm. They asked me to resign immediately. Wow, oh, wow. And and you're going, I get. Unfortunately, it, it brought out a wow. huge conversation with my wife and I last night. I said, I, I get it. Unfortunately, people wear these masks and keep their secrets and keep their, you know, problems hidden because it comes down to for a lot of us in ministry especially full time and professional ministry like i'd love to turn a blind eye to the fact that there is an economics involved and Definitely. branding involved um, that that hey man i got to i got to support my family i've got health benefits i've right. got I'm, right. I'm on staff like i have a life here right. i can't just go from that and go work at you know you know uh, lows or something and mm. and hope that I'm going to be able to maintain being a good dad, being a good husband, et cetera. And it's a, man, it's a tough, tough place to be. And frankly, if he had, if he had not opened his heart, right, he'd still have his job today. And it's a really strange place to be. And I, you know, I encouraged him. I said, "Hey, listen, man, for the sake of peace, I, I lost everything. Yeah, everything. Hmm. But I found peace for the first time, possibly ever wow. in my life. Wow." And uh, that's because, man, living a lie is is fatiguing. Yes. It'll wear you out, bro. It takes a lot of work. <laughs> it does. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. But to be in a place of freedom and peace, and I don't care if you're poor at it, you know, when, when, you, when you have the presence of God in your home and you're not juggling one, one cover-up and another and a lie and et cetera, and you just... Hey, this is me. I'm not a super Christian. Yeah. I'm a human being. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I've had some human moments, and here we are. All right, so take me back. Um, I'm on Facebook. I see a post from you, mm -hmm. um, and, you're, and you're making an admission. And, um, and so many, many people are stunned. Um, I'm, I'm concerned because mm -hmm. you're my guy. Mm -hmm. You're definitely my guy. Uh, take, take me back. What happened? Well, again, like I said earlier, you don't, you don't, you, um, I didn't say it earlier here. I said it on, earlier on another show. No I said, problem. I said, you don't wake up on a Tuesday and go, you know, I think I'm going to get divorced today. Yeah. You know, that is a long time coming. Yeah. And so we had, you know, five years of, of separation and trying to keep up appearances and figure out what we were going to do. And um, so by the time I had announced it, this had already been way done. Got it. Like, but I announced it later, so it wasn't like, hey, just left the courthouse, I'm divorced. Like, it wasn't like that. I wanted to make sure my kids could handle, you know, everything that would come and all the various blogs and comments, etc. Oh, man. And uh, for the most part, I, I felt a, a great outpouring of support and, you know, and again, I didn't even bother telling people, hey, this has been over for years, but, you know, you're just now catching up. Right. Because a lot of people, once the blog started jumping on it, um, 
I've been asked a lot, like, how did you handle that, that circus? And I was like, I had gone through the circus by myself. Got it. Way, way before that. Yeah. So I understood, you know, and I was already on the other side of that. I just had to let everybody work it out themselves. Hmm. What complicated things was okay. that um, shortly after that, I started a relationship with my now wife, yeah. um, uh, Adrian. It was like two months after that announcement. But you got to understand there was the announcement, but there was like so much time prior to the announcement. I keep trying to say that because people have trouble with math. Yeah. And so there were people that, because she's a public person, people came for her saying, oh, she's the reason he got oh, divorced. Wow. She wrecked the house. She wrecked the home. And I'm like, no. So that's the, literally in the last three years, Roy, I've only made two statements ever. This hmm. is the first time I'm talking about it. Hmm. I've only made two statements. One, hey, I got divorced. You know, due to a bunch of circumstances, I said I failed in my marriage. People, that was open up to a lot of interpretation. Well, what did he do? Right, right. And then, um, and then, you know, a few months later, making another announcement that, hey, by the way, I, yes, I am in this relationship. She has nothing to do what, with Not what was thing. going on in my life five years ago. We right. didn't know each other. Everybody calmed down. And I tried to get people to understand it, but, you know, we live in a crazy time, bro, where yeah, we do, if it ever ends up on the on the net, you're done. Like, it must like, be true. It's forever. <laughs> but, like, that, that thing hangs out forever. So I did something that I've probably never done in my life, and that is I kept my mouth shut. Really? Yeah, which is which was hard because there were a lot of I was asked many times to either, you know, do tell alls and like tell the whole story. And if I had told the whole story, it would have made me and a lot of other people look really, really bad. Yeah. And I didn't yeah. want to I didn't mind looking bad because like I owned that. That was part of my demask us uh, experience. Sure, but sure, sure. I didn't want to, you know, hurt other people. Mm -hmm. And so I just took it, man. And and uh, and in it, the the catharsis of writing new music and just, you know, almost autobiographically looking back over the last eight years and writing from that mm. um, has been amazing. And what I think the beautiful part is, is what I mentioned before. It's opening up other people to be able to tell their truth. Mm. All right. So I've been following you for a while. Love the music. The ministry is impactful. It's not just good music, uh, not just something that's poetic. It's, it's anointed. Um, I, I remember the CD Real and certainly mm -hmm. New Season was when I became acquainted. Another level, deeper, love God, love people. I can go on and on. But this new one, mm -hmm. Road to Damascus, um, again, it's that transparency thing. Was the goal to say, hey, y'all need to learn about transparency? Was this cathartic for you, therapeutic? What do you have in mind with the CD? I mean, I think the biggest part of that, certainly Mask stands out, D Mask. Us, but I think the us is the most important part. I don't okay. think you ever go through hell in your life just to go, hey, so I went through that. I think there's always got to be, why have I gone through something and who can I help with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I have found, man, is I, I, I'm finding that I'm able to be a voice and an encouragement um, to the lost, certainly. Mm -hmm. I think I feel like as evangelicals, we're good at reaching the lost, mm -hmm. but the the breakdown is where we struggle with rescuing the found. Mm. We have mm. a lot of people who are on our team, yeah. love God, they're in the church, but they are they're hidden behind a mask and they're struggling in their lives. And we don't know what to do with them, as, as is the case of the thing I just mentioned about my friend yesterday. Crazy. Hey, I'm struggling. Okay, well then we, we've got to get you off our team as fast as we possibly wow. can. Wow, wow. So, but at the same time, if a celebrity comes who's in the news and in the tabloids who's a mess, we can we can we can go reach him. Mm. We can rescue him as he's not a leader in our church. So we have a breakdown there that that is uh, I feel very unjust. And so why did I do this record? I did this record basically to tell my story because everybody kept asking like, well, what you know what is it? And so through the narrative of social media and that sort of thing, I've been able to tell what I wanted to tell. Um, and so the music supports that. Yeah, I feel yeah. like there's a much larger groundswell that will happen as a result of it because we have to get we have to get real with God we have to get real with ourselves and then maybe we can get real with people huh that should be a talk show the real or 
<laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? That would that would work. You know, your your <laughs> wife could be a host. So anyway, yeah, be uh, all right. So man, let's let's stay on that theme. Uh, most of us are cultivated to be uh, perfect looking, uh, mature looking. Mm -hmm. um, when I think of church, to be honest, I, I think of production. That's how I think of church now. I, I I love church. I'm a preacher. I get to sing every now and then. But it's a production. Those ninety minutes or two hours. Uh, it is produced, yes. It's, it's produced, sure. and, and if it's not produced right, I've, I've been on church staff before. The pastor will eat you for lunch. Why didn't you do that? You missed some notes. Uh, yeah. That didn't work right. What was wrong with the lighting? And, and um, man, you, you've been in that world. Um, doesn't it really cultivate the mindset of if you look good, that's better than being good? Uh, it does cultivate that, wrongly, of course, but it, I think there is this expectation of parishioners and, 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 and clergy alike that says, if that person has a microphone on the stage, they must be a super Christian. Wow. They must be a professional Christian. They, they must be flawless. They must have everything going well for them. They must wake up in the morning and just magically worship music is just permeating their house and, sure. and nobody has a bad day and and that's just not true man it's just not true and um i'm interested in talking to people who are like yo i'm suffocating behind this mask mm -hmm. because what i what i kept on for years as a form of protection was actually a form of suffocation because mm -hmm. i'm still called like you said, I'm still anointed. Definitely, I've, man. I've I've had all these you know issues and bad days, but if my calling and and all of these things are irrevocable, I'm suffocating, which means I'm ineffective in doing what I'm called to do. Hmm. I'm not I'm not reaching people. So I'm going. I wonder if I wonder if showing the scars and showing the flaws will help set somebody else free. And that's really what's been the driving force behind this project. When, when I look at the cover of the of the project, mm -hmm. the CD, uh, I see a mask. Mm -hmm. Is that your mask? It by is. Way? Yeah, they did a whole. I did a whole. I went. I live in LA, so I went to this Hollywood prosthetics like expert okay. who does all okay. these films and stuff. All right. And they put this like goo all over my face, and it's like it's a little bit. It's really? a little bit. Uh, <laughs> if you're uh, if you're um, claustrophobic, claustrophobic right. you're gonna have a hard time yeah. with this one because it's about 30, 30 minutes of that, but. Um, Man, the result, yeah, that's my face. All right, so I see that sort of toss back. You and Adrian are um, walking up, I guess it's a beach, uh, shoreline, and um, it, it says to me, um, I'm not looking back, I'm, I'm moving forward. Yeah. Uh, freedom, mm -hmm. uh, independence. Um, I, I, I do have to ask you, um, in light of the fact that God has called us to holiness, he has called us to righteousness, uh, some people have left the church saying, I can't live up to that. God wants more than I can provide. Yeah. What's your answer? My answer is when you fall, the expectation is that you're going to shatter into a million pieces and you are, you know, no longer fit. Mm -hmm. And I have come to learn that you never smash, you always land in his arms. Amen. And and people have a hard time with that. You know, we are so justice oriented that we got to see the pound of flesh exacted from people. We got to see, yeah, man. I need to see them like groveling in the dust. And then it's sort of like the Tiger Woods moment. Like we, we hailed him as the greatest ever. Absolutely. We saw his fall. We saw his, you know, decline in, in, not in, in life and marriage and family, yep. but also in the standings. Yep. And so you see this guy like go from number one in the world to like number 1,365th in the world. Right, right. And you're like, whoa. But then the other day, you amazing. see him win his 80th. It was amazing. His 80th <laughs> championship. And I had never, like the, the, the commentators were like, we've never seen anything like this ever. That crowd this was sea crazy. of people just swarming him with love. And I'm going, man, uh, I love that. Yeah. I, there's a part of me that loves that, but there is the there is the there. Unfortunately, there's the next part that's like, okay, when's he gonna when's he gonna fall again? Yeah. So yeah. the you know our relationship with the media, social media, et cetera, is very very funny. We like a comeback. We like a good story. Sure. But then we're gonna inspect it and see how we can knock it back down again. Yeah. And I don't know if that's just because we are sadistic in our need for entertainment mm. or what, but mm. I know this. Uh, people. Um, don't always 
handle things the right way, and they certainly don't handle it the way God handles it. Hmm. When, when, when I was at the darkest, most tormented moments in my life, um, I found myself in an apartment in, in L.A. You know, I went from a gigantic house in Malibu to this apartment smaller than this studio right mm, now. Mm. Just enough room for a bed, you know, little add a little keyboard in there. Yeah. And I found myself literally sitting at that keyboard again, just saying, God, if nobody ever puts a microphone in front of my face again, but I can meet with you here, mm. then this is this is what I want. Hmm. It wasn't about the chase. It wasn't about the commerce. It wasn't about the economics. It wasn't about awards or sales. It was literally, I lost a place of intimacy with you, and I got to get that back hmm. uh, above above all else. Hmm. And uh, and he showed up. He showed up faithfully, and it was like being catapulted back twenty five years to that kitchen. I love that. All right, so uh, CD has great songs. You wrote, did you write everything on there? I did, yeah. So for the last Except one. Except for Reckless Love. Reckless Love. Uh, the song with your wife, important to put that on there? It was important to me. Secrets is the opening song. We're doing that on the reel uh, tomorrow live. Great. Um, but it was the opening song, and it kind of tells the narrative. You'd, you wouldn't think a worship song would start with, we lie to our lovers, we lie to our friends, mm. painting our pictures and playing pretend. But I did want to paint a picture of what the church looks like. And, and with all of that calamity and all of that chaos around us, the, 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 the punch in the stomach, so to speak, lyrically is, but you see the darkness and you love us the same. Mm. And it's, you know, it's one, I, I like good songwriting like that where you, you, you've painted this picture and then just at the end is this, is this lift. Mm. I like to take people on a journey. So that's how the record opens. And then my favorite song, I know I normally don't have favorite songs on record, okay. but okay. this time I do, and it's um, it's the song I sing with her called I'm With You, Be Still. I love that song. Thank you, man. Yeah, I love it. It's so peaceful. It's so uh, comforting. It is, and it was kind of meant to be. My wife has a fear of flying, even though we're on a plane just about every week somewhere. Wow. And, and this song, I'm With You, I had written with a friend of mine named B.J. Putnam, a okay. great worship leader, and... Um, and so she would listen to this song over and over, I'm with you, and it had a different chorus and a different bridge. So she, you know, we were taking a flight to New York and I realized five hours in, she's listening to the same song. Huh. And I'm like, why are you listening to the same song? She's like, this song just calms me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, and so I, I remember saying something to the effect of, be still. Like, mm. like and, and we both looked at each other like, ooh. So we started writing be still, and we ended up liking the chorus and the bridge of be still and the verse of I'm with you, and we put them together. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, so the, the, the line from the last song on there, and uh, we'll wrap up with this, mm -hmm. is uh, there's no shadow you won't line, light up. There's no mountain you won't climb up coming after me. For that person that has messed up, and again, we're, we're, we're saying that God is holy, God is righteous, mm -hmm. he loves us, he mm -hmm. cares, and God is multidimensional. You know, he's not just, okay, well, I'm, I'm sloppy agape, nor am I trying to bash everybody's hand, head in. Um, what do you say to the person that says, hey, I've messed up. I haven't done all that God would have me to do, and I do love him. I want to do his will, but I feel like an absolute failure right now. What do you say to that person? I would say to that person that um, if you measure what failure looks like by human standards, yeah, enjoy that. You're going to feel that. You're going to mm. feel every ounce of that. Mm. But fortunately, we are not the ones who redeem ourselves. That's good news, man. Fortunately, we didn't die on a cross for our sins. He did, and Amen. he paid it all. And he is gracious. He he will challenge us in the areas of our lives and finding that, that balance. But his love is, is overwhelming. It's reckless. It's relentless. It does not stop. And, you know, you have kids, I have kids, like there's nothing I wouldn't do for them. Absolutely. Kids. They could be the worst humans on earth. Right, I'm right. still their dad. Absolutely. And I'm going to go to the ends of the earth for them. That's good stuff, man. Hey, I'm so glad you stopped by the studio today. Uh, not only am I a fan, I'm a friend. I love you, bro. I love you too. Yeah. All right, Israel Houghton, y'all. Keep it locked right where it is.